Hello, everyone. Welcome to Quantum Catechesis. I'm Father Joe Krupp, and you are not. And today, today, today is Thursday, March 2nd, the year of our Lord, 2024, 3, which one? 23. 23. And I have very little to say because I'm about to say a lot uh in the past so we're about to play an interview with father john ricardo superstar action figure some assembly required never seen before, never seen before. no human or angel even the angels close to their eyes and their ears for this i don't want to say historical interview but i just assume generations of seminarians will be studying this uh so a quick note uh please recall that no one in this interview had slept for some time so this might be insane. I have no recollection of this except walking away going, I love that dude. So without further adieu, know that tomorrow is our question and answer day. We have some questions, but don't hesitate to submit more. Uh, and without further adieu, which is French for I surrender, let's watch this interview. God bless you guys. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Quantum Catechesis. I'm Father Joe Krupp, and you are not. And today, 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 we are, I don't know what date it is, actually. And you don't know, because you are watching this in El Futuro. And that's Spanish for the Futuro. Um, we are filming this on a date that happened. Basically, I'm time traveling. That's all you need to know. And I'm really excited to get started because we have one of my heroes uh, and one of my favorite people here. And of course, I'm talking about me. But beyond that, we have an actual hero and someone I really look up to. And he's going to come on in just a minute, Father John Ricardo. And uh, I can't wait for you to meet him. I have talked about him on this way too much. Uh, but uh, my life is better for his ministry. So without further ado, which is French for I surrender, I would like to introduce Father John Ricardo, superstar action figure, collar sold separately. <laughs> she can even make applause noise. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It just happened. Are you in the same dimension? You're really here. Yeah, I know. And here's the crazy part. You are, and you don't know this, mm. you are time traveling much. with me. I thought so. Yeah. 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 That's why you're This hungry. is the Futuro. Yeah. 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 Oh. Which is Spanish for the Futuro. The Futuro. Oh. I love that. <laughs> I always thought it meant the future. Well, that's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, John Ricardo, I heard for the, I heard like I did some of your RCIA stuff I used at one of my parish assignments. You made a DVD. Uh, of um, talks for people becoming Catholic. Common and ground? What is it? Was it common ground? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, those were game changers for us. Hmm. And I, of course, corrected all your wrong theology because yeah. that's like super. You didn't report me, though, did you? No. No. Oh. No. <laughs> no. It was you. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, beautiful stuff. And then I got to meet you and pray mass with you. And That was a total uh, letdown. Yeah. I was like, he doesn't even believe in God. That's so weird. Uh, but two years ago. Hmm. It was two years ago. And I'm, I'm just been so grateful to the Lord for you and then some of the work you're doing. So my goal, my dream, my mission, should I choose to accept it, is to just let people get to know you. And I know you got a podcast, hmm. yeah, um, and uh, some ministry work you do that I want God's people to know about. Does that sound good? Love it. Okay. And we won't bring up the whole inf unfortunate incarceration thing. Yeah, please don't. Yeah. Uh, think, that was, you told me that in confession. Yeah. 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 A couple so, times. Oh, yeah. By Could the way, bring sorry. It up. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys, just forget you heard that. Okay, just didn't happen. Um, so, brother, tell me about where you grew up. Tell me about growing up. Where'd you grow up? Tell me about fam. Tell me about stuff. Grew up in uh, Birmingham, Michigan. Uh, youngest of five kids. Uh, my folks are gone now. They were married 66 years. Nice. Uh, they're my heroes. Yep. Uh, my dad was a really devout Catholic. My mom was a um, devout uh, Methodist okay. who became Catholic or came into the church in um, 
have been like 1980, 1981, okay. like right after John Paul was elected. 78. He was 78. Yeah, it was shortly after that because he was in the States. Okay. And I remember being in the living room. It was um, my mom, my dad, and I, and we were watching, I think, his visit to Chicago or something okay. like that. And uh, I'll, I remember this because she turned to him. She turned to my dad at a certain point as we were watching the Holy Father uh, play with the kids, like back and forth, banter back and forth. And she says, uh, I have no more objections to the Catholic Church. My oh, man. I and then dude. just came in. And then... Um, and then my folks, my dad was retired at that point, and so my folks spent the next 40 years or so working in the church, serving in the church. So they did, they modeled for me the normalcy of faith. You know? Yeah. Um, and I think between them uh, and the witness of my, I had three sisters, okay. uh, have three sisters, had a brother, he's passed away. Mm. But between my parents' witness and my siblings' witness, I just, I just knew the only way to live a genuinely happy life was to be Christian. I didn't, but I yeah. knew that because they showed that to me. Yep. Fought it for a long time. And then, uh, you know, at a certain point in kind of like my early mid-20s or so, I just okay. kind of finally started to surrender. I'm still in the middle of it, but started to. In that, yeah. yeah. And it's it's funny how patient God is. Like, oh, gosh, I'm so grateful. God. I am too. I'm I tell people all the time. Mercy. He has all the time in the world. Yeah. And all the love in the universe. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, what what did you like to do in high school, college, or as a young yeah, man? Yeah, so I went to Holy Name in Birmingham. Then I went to Shrine in Royal Oak. Then I went to Mich Michigan for college. But And somehow, we're, this is like true ecumenism right here. Oh, totally. Uh, yeah. We, we It's like the Civil War. Or, no, World War One, right? Was it the families. Maginot Line oh, where yeah. they stopped? And, oh, we should sing Oh Holy Night. We should. Yeah, but yeah. We, we, won't. Won't. we want people be, to yes. stay. Yeah, that'd be bad. Yeah. Are you, can you sing? I have no idea. Uh, in a shower. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And I I can sing if I'm in a group. Yeah. If you ask me to sing alone, like even the doxology, I'm like, I'm very uncomfortable. Really? Yeah. Oh. But what do you do? And you do don't you do that in the shower very often. The doxology, yeah, the host gets very gooey. <laughs> um, and... Uh, it's not at all consecrated yeah, at that of course point. Not, yeah, yeah, Jesus right. like left <laughs> the building a long, long time, time ago. Before. Yeah, that's right. Oh, but so, what did you like to do? So, um, growing up, I wanted to play shortstop for the Yankees. That was my dream. Uh, Yankees. Uh, my dad's from New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, so I loved, um, I loved baseball, I loved basketball. Uh, I loved to run. I loved to play tennis. Um, yeah, those were kind of like my loves. I loved music. Are you um, still a Yankees man? I am. Okay. Do you root yeah. for the Tigers? No. Really? Yeah. I root for every other Detroit franchise but except just, the Tigers. Yeah, I get it because if Yankees were your first love. Oh, yeah. Right? And, I mean, and Jeter, we got to see Jeter and uh, A-Rod and holy crap. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, yeah, I'll have to show you. In fact, this is crazy. I have an autographed Joe DiMaggio ball. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so I think it was Chuck who pointed out, like, I took it out of the case. I'm like, bro, I'm holding a ball. Joe DiMaggio held and, and hit. It's a game ball. And then Chuck pointed out that basically means I was married to Marilyn Monroe. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so I that's on my resume now. Okay. Um, and What's uh, you think about this? He he cried. He was so touched. I think that's what it was. With jealousy or with sure, <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever fiction we need here to avoid what was clearly disappointment, um, that's what we're gonna go with. <laughs> what did you study at, at Ann Arbor? Yeah, that place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't even say it, can you? Yeah. When they were when that's they so were painful. playing the EMU one time, I remember some sports announcer showed up and goes. Washtenaw County bragging rights on the line. And I, that's my favorite U of M thing. It is. That's just, I don't care who you are, if you're from Michigan. Uh, that's funny. Washtenaw County bragging rights on the line today. Uh, I studied uh, communications and English. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, somehow we missed this. Like, I'm insane about baseball. Hmm. And I didn't know that about you. And I'll have to show you sometime. I have a lot of, I have a huge collection of autographed baseballs. And my, my greatest achievement is I have every single player from the 84 Tigers. Hmm. Every manager. I have the trainer. And I have this display with all of them. Really? On. Yeah. Oh. And uh, I got a rectory? 
Uh huh. At the rectory? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to show you. It'll yeah. blow you away. That was like the worst year of my life. Oh, <laughs> that's right. We pumped thirty-five you guys. and five to start. I'm like, oh, bless you, boys. Like, <laughs> when can the season be over? Just crown them and let them go. Let's start the eighty-five season. Well, I was the guy this last season that was wasn't I? I was like. The Yankees are going to freight train the American League. And I really thought you guys were. Yeah, so and, did we. And you were just rolling, rolling, rolling. And then Houston was like, you know what? We're going to play baseball. Yeah, sorry, it's over. Oh, my gosh. And then you almost lost. Okay, stop. So uh, you graduated from uh, Ann Arbor. That place in Washtenaw yeah. County Community College. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we could be friends. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and the uh, academic campus. What was the gap between college and SEM? Was there a, any gap? Or did yeah, you go? Yeah, graduated 87. Okay. Uh, went to SEM in 91. Got 91? you. Yeah, 91. Okay. You were two years ahead of me then, I'll bet, at SEM. Yeah. Because uh, I graduated. I kept hearing about you. Huh? I kept hearing about you. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you'll heal, John. The Lord will. But they tell me. Yeah. I graduated and from U of M in 92, <laughs> and I was in seminary by 93. From U of M. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, really. Yeah, I have a history and uh, public speaking degree from there. I just prefer MSU. You do? Yeah. You're going to be kidding me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I do, I do. Um, but I, I was, so I was too, and I met you my first week. They took us all on retreat, and you were just there shortly. I think, were you in Rome in 93? Okay. Yeah. And I remember meeting you when we played cards. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. it. Yep. Uh, and um, what a cool thing. Yeah. You know, but uh, so then after Sam, so were you at, in the U.S. for seminary at all? or Did, did you a open? year at Sacred Heart for okay. philosophy because... Uh, you know, uh, secular degree, degree right. same. Yeah, yeah. was yeah. Sister Jeanette Bodine there? She was. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to hear a great Sister Jeanette Bodine story? Can't wait. Yeah, and um, there's going to be some swearing here, people. So, because Sister used to swear a lot. She swore. Yeah, <laughs> she did. So, um, she's, still alive. she's looking I hope she's at alive. my transcripts, and uh, she starts signing me up for all these philosophy classes. I'm like, Sister, I, I got a d degree, you know, in history and philosophy from. U of M. And she went, oh, son, everything they taught you was bullshit. <laughs> That's what she said. And I'm like, and she, you remember, she was this tall. And she had that thick New Orleans accent. And I remember my second week with Father Berg going, everything they taught me was, <laughs> yeah. So she was right. Son of a gun, she was right. <laughs> she, she taught right. Uh, philosophy of the human person, didn't she? Yep. Yeah, because I remember being in class. She my first paper. So one of my classmates, I remember she asked, so what is distinct about the human person? And this guy, in all seriousness, raises his hands and he goes, thumbs. <laughs> Posable thumbs. Yeah. And she looked at him like, what yeah, I, kind of demented <laughs> moron are you? He's like, it's not thumbs? <laughs> no, it ain't thumbs. <laughs> are you last. sure, sister? He didn't last. Oh, yeah. He went to state too. Nice. <laughs> See, because yeah. I used to think an animal. It's, it's a farm school, right? I was I was thinking the same thing. I was like, well, except I think don't raccoons have opposable thumbs? I think so. Yeah. And monkeys or something, something there. Yeah. yeah I don't know what Snakes don't. I don't want to brag, but I know my <laughs> biology or zoology or zoology. Something. Yeah, I know my <laughs> zoo studies. Um, so one year at the heart to get the philosophy certificate. Yep. And then off to the Greg. Okay, nice. Yep. And uh, what, was there anything in seminary, like, did you go in with, like, this is what the Lord's called me to? Yeah. Or did you go in with, I think the Lord's called me to this? No, I went in from, yeah, I went in crystal clear because I had a really profound encounter with him. Praise God. Um, where he invited me to priesthood and, you know, of course the church has to confirm that. But yeah. So I went in. Clearly thinking this is what the Lord, or convicted, this is what the Lord was asking me to do. I don't think I ever had one doubt until last year, right before we were ordained a deacon. I remember walking into my um, uh, spiritual director's room one day. I just said, I don't, I don't think I can stay. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I, I don't. I don't have, I can't love the way Jesus loves. And he says, you're just realizing that now? <laughs> and I said, yeah. He goes, now you should stay. Yeah. You should have left if you oh. thought you actually could before that. Right. But now, no. now that you realize that, now you have reason to stay. And yeah. so, uh, 
no, I never had any doubts. Um, I, I d- tried to discern at a certain point whether it was going to be diocesan or okay. religious. Did you, uh, did you have an order you had your eye on? Oh, Jesse's? I have a huge devotion to Ignatius. I wanted to stay Catholic. Yeah, that's that makes sense. <laughs> so I decided to stay. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> We can say that, right? Yeah, ish. You know, uh, I made sure I said it first so that I get the angry letters. Thanks, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a closet Jesuit. Right. Yeah. Jesuits are closet Catholics. Maybe is that a way we could put it? I. It's, I'm it's a multiple okay, choice test. This is a friendly rivalry between diocesan and religious priests. Indeed. Yeah, but uh, I, I had the experience of going in. Pretty sure the Lord was calling me, but not liking that. Hmm. And the healing for me was when I realized I really want this. Like my, the end of my first year at seminary, I I had no idea what priesthood was. That was really, I think, what at core the problem was. Hmm. That I knew a lot of really unhappy priests. And I assumed the way, yeah, I don't know how to say it. But once I realized what priesthood was, then I had the same issue of, Oh, I have no business being here, mm. right? I, I, I have no business being here, and uh, Dan Trapp was a big mm. help to me. Yep. And uh, Bill Easton, did yep. you know Bill? I did. Oh, yeah. And they were big helps to me. Yeah. I had almost zero. So I had to learn the church. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I had no devotional life growing up because Same. I had an ecumenical family, and so normalcy of faith, but very um, general, maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, it it, it would have looked much more evangelical yeah. to people, even though my dad was uber Catholic um, and um, didn't go to church for about 10 years of my life. So it's kind of hard to learn what a priest does if you don't go to church, right? Yeah. But I loved, I read scripture even when I wasn't living a Christian life. Yeah, cool. um, I read scripture all the time. And so I always say to people, like my model of priesthood was Paul. Like, that's who I knew. Yes. That, that was always like, okay, that that's what a priest is. That's what a priest does. And it's very much, um, it's very significant for the work that we do now, the ministry that we do now in, in Acts 29. But um, that was the biggest help for me was knowing the word of God and um, emulating, you know, to the degree that somebody can, um, yeah. what you saw in Paul. Yeah. And do you mind if we jump on the Acts 29 boat? Is that okay? Whatever you want. So this, if you don't mind, let's first ask, what is Acts 29 uh, for, for God's people here? Yeah, so the first question is, uh, if you know your Bible, there is no 29th chapter of Acts, which is the point. Right. Right. So uh, it's the name of our 501c3, but we're all living the 29th chapter of Acts, right? The way we would say it is, you know, the same Holy Spirit who wrote the early chapters of the church is writing right now. Yes. Which is really significant. It's supposed to make a point that um, that you and I aren't historical accidents. Like, mm-hmm. nobody just happens to be here right now, right? Like, God very intentionally willed me to be alive at this moment, just like he intended Paul to be alive at his time, and, you know, Juan Diego to be alive at his time, mm-hmm. and Therese of Lisieux to be alive at her time. Like, Joe Krupp was born for now. I was born for right now. So um, we're, a, uh, we're a team of nine people right now. I'm the only priest everybody else is like. Um, we're, we're, we would describe ourselves in lots of different ways, but kind of a favorite way for me to describe us is something like entrepreneurial missionaries. Yeah. So we like to build things. Um, we have a passion about transformation in the church. Um, so you and I are about the same age. And the way I would uh, phrase it and often say it to guys is like, we were trained for a different era than this one. Yes. Yes. And, and nobody knows what to do right now. Yeah. Like, we've never been here. And that can either cause people consternation and fear and anxiety, or we can go, well, God's not in heaven pulling his hair out. Yeah. So he's Lord. He's not nervous. He must have a plan for right now. So let's ask him to show us the plan. So our work is with, uh, it's, it's kind of in a, a four main areas. We, d- we do work with priests. We've, you know, we've been, had a good fortune to be with you on a couple of occasions. We're coming up again with another opportunity Fired with uh, 15 it. or so guys. Um, so we, we want to really just kind of revive and equip clergy. Yes. And it's both of those things because many of, we, we've had a chance to be with about 3,000 priests over the last three years, and yeah. many of our brothers are doing great. Yeah. And boatloads of them are not. Yeah. And nobody knows it. Yeah. 
we, we call it the unspoken crisis. Like yeah. the, so many priests love the Lord, love the church, love their people, but they're lonely, they're discouraged, they're anxious, their lives are going sideways at times. Um, so we want to first revive them because if we can pour into them, then the trickle-down effect yes. of the people that they care for is huge. If the enemy can knock them off, oh, the trickle-down effect of that is huge. So that's the first thing. Second thing is um, we do a fair amount of work with bishops and their teams. Oh, okay. Um, so we call it mission guiding, which doesn't make any sense to anybody. It's kind of like executive coaching. Okay, yeah, that's that the, makes That's sense. the easiest analog to understand it. Um, so to, to work with those bishops who are serious about transformation in their diocese or archdiocese, so we've had a chance to you know, kind of get into an ongoing relationship with a number of guys. Um, we, uh, we look for really strategic opportunities to preach the gospel. Okay. That's yep. really the heart of what we do. And then... Um, uh, we try to like much like you actually. We just try to leverage media. Yeah. Because there's so much, you know, not just in the secular world, but in the church world, there's so much media which is just stirring up anxiety yep. and fear and whatever. It's yeah, it's totally demonic. And yeah. so we don't we don't want to like stick our heads in the ground, but we want to be able to look at what's going on and be able to inspire and to encourage and to give hope. Yeah. All flowing from the fact again that Jesus isn't nervous right now, so I shouldn't be nervous. And it's even. As you're talking, I, and I'm an emotional guy, but trying not to get emotional here because of, you know, to focus, if you don't mind, on the priesthood part, because I don't know if you, I'm a priest. Yeah. I thought so. My wife just found out <laughs> it's not going Which well. one? The one in Utah. Okay. Yeah, the one in Michigan's clueless. <laughs> uh, but it's, when you gathered us, uh, when you guys, forgive me. When your team gathered us together, hmm. and I felt it so intensely that I was embarrassed at how much I said it. For the first time in years, I didn't feel completely alone as a priest. I was in a room, and nobody, none of the priests were talking about, with great joy, that couple, they said, no, no, you can't get married. They're not, they weren't sitting there parsing all the bizarre nuances of liturgical and canon law. Like I sit at this table and I, I do two things when I sit with priests. One is just mess around and listen. And the other is don't say a word because mm -hmm. I'll be so sad. And all of a sudden we're talking about Jesus mm -hmm. with priests mm -hmm. who I know love the Lord. Uh, and, it was enough that I had to leave the table just to deal with what I was feeling. And I couldn't even name it. I actually texted Carrie, and I was, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm not alone. I don't know these guys, and I already love them, and they love me. And what they're trying to do is when I, I just want to be holy. Yeah. I, I don't want to be a bishop. I don't want to reintroduce, you know, an, an older rite of mass, and I don't want to go some kind of freak show lefty thing. Yep. I just want to be holy yep. and obedient, and and the, and uh, I can't even, right? And then the second gift you gave was you planted the seed the first time we were together uh, with the boat thing that we're, are you going, you're going on this one, right? No, you're sailing along. Okay. In my heart, I'm flipping you off. Thanks. Yeah, I can't. The camera's here. I'm deflecting uh, it. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, I tried. Right back but at you. it's when, and I'm hypersimplifying, okay? But basically, all of our efforts as a church are geared toward a Christian society, but this is a post-Christian society. Yeah. And so um, that simple concept took root in me more deeply than a lot that I've heard. And I, I read obsessively. I listen to lectures obsessively. Nothing grabbed me. Mm. Like sitting there going, that's why this thing I'm doing works. That's why this thing I'm doing doesn't work. Because it's just utterly true. It's it's so crazily true. Mm. And we we even as did a whole thing on this called Foundations. And it was what, like 20, sis? It was like I did 20 shows of this, starting with God loves you, 
right? You were created by a community of persons. Don't even mention Trinity for a while. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and, you know, yeah, right? Like I was telling them at, we had a meeting and I said, you know, at my last parish, we would, the every year, you know, if you want to join our CIA, go talk to so-and-so. And, you know, eh. Uh, now, I'd get people at bars or grocery stores, yep. and I'd get them to go, but never people at church. So it was real simple. The next year we got up and said, if anyone wants to join Catholic classes, talk to so-and-so. Yep. It, truly, we had 12 people. Yep. It's a tiny little parish. Uh, we had about three a year. We had 12 the first year we stopped saying RCIA. Right, because... What is that? Right. Right. We started calling it becoming Catholic because yeah, that's what it's about. It, boom. So like, uh, and now, yeah. but the, there's a significant change now because now it's OCIA. Our, that's gonna that's gonna be a game changer. Oh yeah, that's gonna fix everything. So wow. now you just tell everybody after mass if you want to join OCIA. OCIA. OSHA. You want to join OSHA? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to join OCIA, uh, you can be a spy <laughs> and be surprised by the fact that you're a spy. Oh, CIA. Um, and I read something Richard Rohr wrote that just, poof, he said, no effective change in the church has ever began at the top and went down. It always starts at the bottom and goes up. And, and I know he can write some freaky stuff, but he can also hit home runs. Yeah. Wherever you find truth, it can only come from God. Yeah. Right. Dude. Yeah. But I, I you know, and I, I, I just, um. I didn't feel alone. And it, and it, I called her on the way home, and I, I couldn't even articulate. Mm. It was like I met priests who talked about Jesus, but not as a business proposition. Um, and nobody was, well, how many parishioners do you have? It was just. Do you remember the first night uh, that we gathered? Like pizza. Everybody went around and introduced each other? Yes. And the, the one thing that I think everybody had in common was, uh, you know, I just can't stand going to things with priests. Yeah. For the reasons you just articulated, which is it, the conversation, not always by any no. means, but oftentimes can be either really shallow or, yeah, just crazy busy. How about yeah. you? Oh, I'm even busier than that. Yeah. Oh, you got that big a debt? Oh, you should hear my debt. You know, oh, you got yeah. that many people in RCA? You should see how many people I got. It's like, so it, 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 it's, it always, from seminary on, actually, it was disturbing to me how literal I, I want to go like, you're going to talk about Jesus for the rest of your life. Why don't you, why can't we talk about him? Right. Why not? Just for something crazy. <laughs> you know, why do we yeah. have to talk about theology or liturgy? Or why can't we just talk about him and how we know him and what he's done in our lives yes. and what we want to be for him? You know, um, but that's un unfortunately um, doesn't seem to be all that common. But that experience with those guys, yeah. um, something really special happened there, I think. And Oh, I, I came home changed. I did, uh, and I can feel the power of it as a kind of tether, right? At times, like, I had to miss the second gathering, and it was so ironic. You may remember, it was, why can't I be there? Okay, remember how you guys said, never do this? This priest did this, and now I need to help. And remember how we said priests should never blah, blah, blah? This priest fell into that, and now I, and, and it was just so ironic, and it almost broke me. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in the end, I'm going again, right? I think it's February yeah, already. Up early February. Yeah. And um, as soon as I got that email from you, oh, uh, and from you guys, right? I, I think I was the first guy to respond. Yeah. And if it you was weren't, like, you were la, 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 <laughs> you know, and, uh, and of course I wrote something 12 year old, you know, we loved it. Yeah. 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 We, um, we were expecting eight. We got 12. It was yeah, awesome. I'm growing. I don't want to brag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm due any day now, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm babbling. It's just that is what we need so badly. And, and what's tough, I think for priests is you can't track faithfulness. You can track success and you can track failure. You cannot track faithfulness. You're in, and like you also helped us, and we've been working on this. Uh, I'm big on accountability, hmm. but not sure how to pull it off. 
except I just talk to these guys about everything. We pray together, we talk together, and then you gave us some very, um, come Holy Spirit, practical mm. ways to enact that through the whole staff, mm-hmm. right, which we're working on. Because I don't think I told you, they appointed me dean of the whole, it was like 14 parishes. <laughs> because, you know, I need more to do. Absolutely. You were yeah. bored. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited not? about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let me say, say yeah. something about that Rock real it, quick. Because uh, I think one of the, you know, one of the, the one, of the, one of the big points we're trying to increasingly drive home, here's the way we would say it, two things with regards to, like, leadership and parish ministry and church ministry and whatever, like, um, leadership's a team sport. Yeah. And we're, we're want right now to talk about two people, especially you could look at Jesus, but that's not really helpful because he's a divine person. Right. Maybe you haven't noticed, but I'm not. So um, let's look at Moses and Paul. Okay. I right. like so, it. So the Lord, uh, you know, Moses is pretty successful. He delivers the he Israelites right. out of yeah. you know, Egypt and all that. But did he have parish debt? No. No, I he didn't. Right. He did not. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he's, <laughs> he's it's at a certain point, they're in the desert, right? And his father-in-law comes to him and says, uh, my translation of the Hebrew, you're an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why am I an idiot? He goes, because you're trying to do everything on your own. And he says to him, find 70 wise people. Because this is too hard for you, and it's wearing them out. Yeah. So we call that the Jethro principle. So, the, you know, we would often say afterwards, so like if Moses needed 70? Yeah, what am I going to yeah, How many do I need, right? Yeah. 700. <laughs> Mo needed 70, yeah. right? But the other guy's Paul. And, the, and we would, we would kind of get into it by saying, uh, we asked this recently to a gathering of um, priests and their, their teams. I said, do you think Paul had a staff? And they all thought I said, or I meant, do you think Paul had people with him? Oh, Okay. I the image of Paul is he's a lone ranger. He's just kind of an itinerant, wandering missionary. Okay. It's like, no, no, that's not what I mean at all. <laughs> what I mean is, do you think Paul thought of the people that he did ministry with as a staff? Because I don't think so. No. I don't think that word shows up. Not once, brother. He calls them brothers and sisters. I think his best friends are a married couple. Yeah. I think Priscilla, yeah, Priscilla and Aquila are, are, yeah. are his best friends. They show up everywhere he is. He's at least yeah. in three communities. Um Barnabas, and, Titus, and yet, Timothy. We yeah. talk about the people that we work with. Yeah. That's my staff. Yeah. She's my whatever. Yeah. He's my this. It's like, I don't think that's a biblical way of talking about Not people. at all. Right? So Not I, at all. So you have, you have a role. You're, you're clearly pastor. And, you know, I, I was pastor for crushing my years, enemies. whatever. Yeah. Crushing your enemies, right? That's the for pastor, Jesus. right? That's in love. Oh, totes. Always in love, yeah. I love for myself. You. Um, yeah. But we we need to learn to to see each other across the table in a new way, like we have, like in, in Jesus's words, you know, like you have one teacher, <laughs> yeah, and you're all brothers I and sisters. Not about that, man. Yes. Right? So, um, Bro. just to have an attitude that flows from that, as opposed to first of all, that means I don't have to figure everything out on my own, because oh. I'm not that smart. And second, we need to see ourselves as men and women who are disciples of Jesus who have been, for some reason in his mysterious providence, set apart for this ministry. And yes, we have different roles, but um, the fundamental role is family. I, oh, I, I did a convo, I spoke at a convo, I ran the convocation for a diocese. Hmm. And I don't want to say which one. But I talked about to the priests, I did, you know, blessing challenge, blessing challenge. And the challenge, I said, and I said, brothers, this is going to hurt. And I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to be another person who's an expert on priesthood. But I said, it's a common pattern I see that there's a priest and the diocese knows he's got problems. And not the problems we all have. And not illegalities, mm. but problems that would get you fired if you had a job in a secular world. In any other place. Right. But in, thi- but in this world, it just gets you a bigger parish. Yeah. All right. Um, and so finally, that pastor melts down after 10 years of doing his best, but refusing to t- fight those demons. Mm. So he's removed. 
And now we bring in another priest and we say, now, now fix that. And so what's the first thing he does? Fire the staff. The people who adapted their life, their personality, and everything about themselves to a broken style, we then reward by saying, we're done using you. We're going to get more people to use now. And the fact that we won't take the time to heal, like my last parish, I have no doubt that in a normal way, that staff had to readjust to my non-neuroses. My neuroses aren't there anymore. My flaws aren't there anymore. My strengths aren't there. So they had to spend years now changing to meet the next guy, which they do out of love or practicality. You know, and I just said, never be that priest. Be willing to walk that painful road with them as long and hard as you can. And now, sure, sometimes you're going to have to say, we can't fix this, right? But it it is an amazing thing. And I do try to call my staff brothers and sisters. But I just said I tried to call my staff. And I want you to know, I promise you, brother to brother, I'm going to be conscious of this now because I do use those words. And I use them out of a habit. Yeah. And... I don't like that habit now. And I mean that quick. I think we all did. And, and yeah, I remember we, we started becoming, when, when I was still in the parish, we got really intentional about like, okay, the relationship has to change and the relationship yep. has to be family. And I remember one guy objecting one time. He's like, well, that, that can't be the model because you don't fire family. And I said, you're right. So therefore, when relationships have to change or when, when, uh, when working relationships have to change and we for whatever reason, we can't do ministry anymore. We don't sever relationships. And so I remember thinking, uh, I've always, not always, but of the last set of years, I guess, maybe have reflected at length about Paul and Barnabas and Mark, right? Love Which that. I just, so St. Paul, St. Barnabas, St. Mark, um, at a certain point, stop working together. Yeah. Yeah. And it's as if Paul says, you know what, I'll die for you. But I'm not walking with but you. But we, we can't serve together anymore. Yeah. And then they get reunited, or at least Paul and, and Mark Barnab. do. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, the, like, there's a reason that's in Scripture, right? It's yeah. like saints don't get along sometimes. But, it you know, just like Christians are supposed to date and then break up yeah. as disciples, not the way the world does. Right. So when we're doing ministry together, um, if there comes a point where we have to stop doing ministry together, and there are times. Yeah. Um, we don't imitate the world. We, we're not driven by legal. We're not driven right. by HR. We're, we're driven Bro. by the fact of you're my sister or you're my brother, and I'm really sorry, but God must have a great plan for you. I just don't know what it is, but it's not here. Yeah. Uh, or I may need to go, whatever the case might be, right? Um, but that seeing each other as family as opposed to imposing a secular structure and mentality onto, um, you know, a staff has got to happen if we're going to have a, a newfound understanding of what it is that we're about to be doing. Right. And, and we need to see ourselves like, just like Paul and Barnabas get set apart for the work of mission in Acts 13. So we, we need, as people who serve in the church, to make sure that we understand, I don't have a job. The Holy Spirit has set me apart. Yes for ministry with you so we have been selectively set apart for the Lord not because we're better it was like it's a mysterious providence that we've been set apart um, for others but that's what we have we have a ministry we don't have a job and you, when you said not because we're better I don't know if you saw this it was a bishop in the Philippines who uh, I think it was in um, come Holy Spirit uh, Pillar Catholic I think okay. quoted him at the ordination homily. And he said, God did not choose you because you're better. Hmm. God chose you because you're worse. And your recognition of that will make you cling hard. And <laughs> boy, boom, you know what I mean? Right, like that moment you had and I had at seminary where you're like, now that I get it, yep. I crave it more and know I got no business being a part of this by yep. any rational human standard. No. Right. And I, I, and that was actually the magic moment. Maybe one of the many where we just grab Jesus feet and are like, I'm not letting go. Yeah. It's Paul. When Paul says like, yeah. it's not a cute little line in a letter, you know, like 
Christ Jesus, you know, came to call sinners, of which I am the worst. Yeah. Like, that's radical humility. Yeah. Right? Paul's not just like, oh, I think this will be very impressive. I'll write it this way. Right. And like, he wasn't he really writing the scripture. That. Right? That's how he's putting it. He's just writing his buddy. Yep, exactly. There was nobody sitting there going, bro, 2,000 years from now. That's right. In a country a no one knows exists. <laughs> in a language that hasn't been invented yet, there's going to be a Bible. And pe- No, he's just like writing his bro. Yep, he's exactly. writing his family in Ephesus or Col- 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 Colossia, all these places just, and pouring out his heart. Yep. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that in me, everybody would have confidence. If yeah. he can get me, he can get you. Oh, dude. Do you see what I mean? Do you see, I could, I, uh, I want to, I asked the bishop for a new assignment where I serve at your feet. Oh, awesome. Uh, he, he said no. Oh, shoot. Um, he said it would really damage you. <laughs> um, yeah. Further. <laughs> Further. Yeah. Uh, I agree. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> good for my feet. Yeah, that was and that was where I was talking to you. I started and then things blew up. But like they're starting to get on me about you know what am I twenty five years right and s- still an idiot and uh, I haven't had a sabbatical right and I I said uh, okay here's what I want to do and I'm so stupid you 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 know the end of this before I do I said, what do you mean well it's when you go away for four months and I'm like oh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to buy a stack of books, and I'm going to get on a train in Europe, and I'm going to go through the Alps, right? Like, I've been making this map for years, where I just want to ride these trains, you know, and and I'm going to read, and nobody's going to be asking me questions, and I don't have to think about the 900 ways I'm failing, right? And the 9,000 people I'm failing. It's just, I'm going to exist. And they're like, Yeah, no, you need to go to a program. (laughs) So you're going to invent a program. Love to. Okay. Yep. Because that was what my my little tech stuff, I got to talk to you about sabbatical. That's my program. I'm going to go find you jerks. We'd love to. And I'll wash your dishes. I'll do whatever needs to be done. We had a seminary intern last year. We have have a a transitional deacon coming in from uh, Ireland. Nice. To do a couple months with us. Uh, From Ireland. From Killarney. Um did you ever notice that everything sounds like a question? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, I actually, the probably one of the greatest feats I ever pull out, and I don't want to brag, but I'm going to. Yeah. I spoke Spanish with an Irish accent just to see if I could do it, and it was not easy. <laughs> I'll bet. Yeah. A lot of people were so moved, they cried. <laughs> hey, mi nombre es padre. Padre, trabajo en la calle con los niños. Oh, it is lovely. But um, so <laughs> we have an audience from uh, from the UK and from Ireland. Do you know this? Wow. Yeah. Okay. There's Richard Walsh who fakes an English accent, <laughs> and I always tell him, "No, it sounds like this." Lo 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 lo, and he does something different. I don't know what that is. There's Patricia from Scotland. You got to say it like huh? that. That's in the Bible. <laughs> But no kidding, so you got some cat coming out from a, a, he's a transitional yep. deacon. Yep. Did you ever hear the joke about the guys who are transitional priests? We always joked about that in no. seminary. <laughs> yeah, Those were the guys who were just waiting for the hat. You know, like, he's a part of the transitional presbyterate. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> oh, no, I've never heard of that, but now I, I can picture a whole set of guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It was like Bill Easton always had this story. He's like, just give them the hat. Then they'll be out of our way. <laughs> Isn't that... With a propeller on top. Yep. Yeah. Wee! But... <laughs> this feels like the clerical gong show. Oh, man. You know, uh, what was it? Last week, I, <laughs> I was walking people through. Uh, Yeshua was Jesus' name. I said, you know, in Latin, it's Jesus. And then... Greek, it's Jason, and then that just struck me, and I, I knew this, but I never, and I'm like, praise Jason, <laughs> so <laughs> I prayed to Jason Friday, I think, oh, and then Chuck went, it was Friday the 13th, Uh-oh. and I was praying to Jason, I'm like, this might end bad, I'm going to be totes honest with you, this might end, but praise Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Come out with your pumpkin head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Little beard hanging out through it. <laughs> we can do this, bro. 
<laughs> but yeah, so I'm coming so out. Coming out I feel so we'll bad for one. you guys. I'm so sorry. Oh, we would love it. No, you, you really won't. You, you, so it's it's interesting. Do you have any so I got requirements about showering or anything? No, no. Oh, sweet, no, I'm no, in. No, none whatsoever. Um, <laughs> we have a, a a guy who just reached out uh, two days ago, actually, and said, "Hey, um, I was just told to take a sabbatical. Can I come spend time with you?" I th I think we hear more and more from priests in different parts of the country. Just yeah. Um, some of what the Lord's uh, allowed us to experience in serving together and the graces that he's poured out on us because um, we're out of the fray. Yeah, and you're safe. I feel safe yeah. with you guys. And so uh, guys want to come. Yeah, I and guarantee that's what I don't know. It's wide open. Are you aware of that? Like there is a profound sense of safety around your, your, your team and you? Um, yeah, I think we are. I, I really, really felt it. Praise um, God. Yeah. Uh, very strong. It was like, I can be where I am. You. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have to be embarrassed about, I mean, I'll feel embarrassment because that's, I'm not prideful at all in any way, which is good. But I do lack self-awareness, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. No, but all kidding aside, you know, there's that prideful thing. I just apologized to them the other day. I'm like, I hate how messy my head and heart are these days. Like the last, since Christmas, I've just been a wreck. It's been a freight train. I read this uh, line the other day that I can't get out of my head. Um, so I think in images all the time. So Contal Mesa uses this image of our minds are like one of those trees in the summer where all the birds are in and they're all just Bro. singing. And he says, and what the Holy Spirit wants to do is fire a gun into the air so that the, the birds scatter and it's just the tree. Bro. It's like, that's my mind. Yeah. Like, my mind is filled with chirping birds. Dude, you that's know? a powerful image. I, I always say a bag of cats. Don't I always say my brain's a bag of cats. Mm. But that really is it. And I, I love Condola Mesa. I, I got too. to hear him speak. He came to Lansing and spoke to the priest one year. Oh, uh, three straight days. Well, wow. uh, brother just sat on a stool. I was sitting this yeah, close, he's and he's remarkably just remarkably humble. Oh, ho home run after home run after home run. I used, you know, uh, just thinking of the image of the tree and the birds and the thoughts and whatever. Um, I have a devotion to Solanus Casey, and I um, oh, love that cat. Um, but I often ask him just to stand. You know, say so he was a porter, st st stood at, at a door, right? I'm saying, stand at the door of my mind, and don't let in that which I don't want to get in and the yeah. Lord doesn't want in. You know, just stand there and go, sorry, we're closed today. Yeah. You know, and open the door for those thoughts which are gonna be helpful. Mm. I need I need things like that. Like I need I need the intercession of the saints and I need Two. heroes and I lean on help. Anthony a lot. Saint Anthony, he was his feast is my ordination date or my ordination date is his whatever however you say it. And uh, I always dismissed him. Well, he's a page saying a lot of things. And he, it's the same thing as the baby Jesus. He became cute, hmm. which is the worst downfall. Hmm. No, Anthony was dangerous. Like, baby Jesus was dangerous, you know, um, and simultaneously vulnerable, hmm. right? And But we just got, I'll have to show you when, I was going to say when we hang up, uh, when whatever this thing happens with the schlubler. Uh, when the adults stop us, <laughs> um, we just got a Salinas Casey statue installed in our church. Oh, room. awesome. Oh, I love that cat. Oh, wow. I do. Um, and he's got his little glasses, yeah, bro. Yeah, I love those. Yeah. Kind of like Salinas Casey meets Maximilian Colby. Yes. To me, whenever I, I see that. I get them. I get I get Salinas mixed up with Maximilian and with uh, Pio. Oh, yeah. I All the time. That. Yeah. I, I don't know what that is, uh, but I get P.O. and Casey mixed up, and I have quoted one saying it was the other. All that It's like Lucy and Agatha. You shared with me I'm, the the cruise that you and I were able to do whenever that was two, three years ago together. Uh, we were on the bus. I'll never forget this. You shared with me a line from or um, a prayer that you'd shared about with St. Anthony that I've never forgotten. Oh, yeah. Do you remember this? I do. So we're in the bus, and it was like this throwaway line, and I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. And and the line was, um, um, Anthony is a patron of lost things, obviously, and um, as a great intercessor for purity. Yeah. And I went, how do you get Anthony as an intercessor for purity? 
and so, I mean, you know, I've, you, you know this about me, and I've, I've talked about it in lots of different contexts, but I was a, um, sexually abused when I was a kid. And um, I don't, like, I, I, I seriously don't ever remember being or feeling innocent. Yeah. I know what you mean. And so you said that about Anthony. I'm like, would you go find that for me? Tell me I did. Because yeah. I, I don't know where that is. I don't even know where to begin to look. Yeah. And it, that was a really significant thing you shared that left a huge oh, impact. God. So thank you for that. Tell me I sent you the card. You did not send me the card. Crap. Okay. I'll send you the card. Send me the card. Because I pray that every day. Oh. Um, and same same circumstances as you. Send it to me. Yeah. I'd love to see it. And that feeling from as soon as you were aware of yourself of there's something wrong with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that cat. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. We, we have his first class relic of him at Holy Family. Okay. And so I wrote a little bio for it. Well, wrote. I read bios and typed a summary. <laughs> and, um, and took credit for it. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know, he's dead. He doesn't care. Uh, but, uh, there was a whole thing in there. What I, I never. See if you find anything lost again. <laughs> He's gonna he's gonna hide. He's gonna move stuff oh, now. I I Where put the keys? bulletin. Oh, you'll love this, bro. True story. Holy Family had this lost and found box. I swear to God, there was a Saint Anthony medal in there. <laughs> and I'm like, now that's irony, right? That's irony. If you lose a Saint Anthony medal, God hates you, right? You're the one person where God's like, I can't, I can't. But isn't that great? <laughs> I swear to God, there was a St. Anthony medal in our lost and found, and I can see him in heaven going, what am I, an idiot? What are you, what are you doing to me? What you, my reputation just <laughs> gone. Yeah. I prayed for my, him to find my sanity. Uh, yeah, he, he said no. Yeah. But uh, he, he uh, this goes back to your thing about a post-Christian society mm. of he found a way to talk to people. Yeah. Like Francis uh, wasn't a great preacher. Right. He was a great human. Right. He was a magnet. Yeah. Antony could light it up. Yep. And um, I read an account that said 40,000 people. And you think of the population of Italy at that point. Mm. Um. He was talking, and then more and more came, so he just kept going. And then he'd hear confessions, then he'd get back up and teach, and then he'd hear confessions. And they were, and that's thing, and it was like, and that's ultimately we killed him at 38. Wow. wow. He's just exhausted. Yeah. Just fell over. Yeah. Um, when people find someone who can talk their language about the ineffable, there is a... a uh, magic is, you know what word I'm trying yep. to find. There is a connection God forges and a hunger it reveals. Yep. You know, that whole our hearts are made for thee. That's you, by the way. Uh, I, I, I think I'm prettier than him. <laughs> um, at least now. <laughs> yeah, certainly. It's been in the ground a while. <laughs> yes. uh, no, I, I really want to. And you don't know how much of it was sharpened and became intentional instead of a quirk of my personality mm. when you were like, no, it's post-Christian society. We are starting from the ground up. Yep. And, and the cancer in the equation is that everyone doesn't think they're at the ground up. Right. Well, I'm on the fourth floor. Right. It's like, no, you don't have a foundation. Right. And it's, it's not their fault. You know, uh, they just never heard it. No. They never heard it. We, no. we, we are enamored in Acts 29 with a line from a, an author, she says, um, uh, in the final analysis, theological speculation can only take us so far, which is what we see in the church so yeah. oftentimes, right? You know, disciples get together and, they, and they, they, they argue about different things theologically, whatever. She says, um, we need to know the story. Yep. And I don't think, 
I don't think most people know the story. I don't think most people have ever heard the story. Right. And, and even more fundamentally, like the way we talk about it now, like I don't even think people know there is a story. Yeah. And most especially, they don't know there's an author. Yeah. And they don't know he's good. And he's holding the pen, writing. Not not like I'm some passive puppet, but he's writing the story that is history. Yeah. Because it's his story. And you and I have starring roles. We all do. Yeah. And um, let's let him write however he wants to, confident that he's a good father. Yes. Dude. We have to poop. Okay. We're going to go from the sublime to the ridiculous. Cool. Okay. This is an extremely important tradition on the show. And I want to be clear, people have died. But don't be afraid. It's all right. My heart's about to go out anyway. Okay. So, um, no, you're skinny, by the way. Um, so, okay. So, this is called the speed round. Speed round. Cool. And it's a series of questions where it's A or B, right? And you really can't get them wrong. But you just I'm look good. stupid. Yeah, and we'll judge you. Great. You know, awesome. yeah, in a very unchrist like way. Fantastic. Uh, but so with that in mind, do you feel ready? Like, do you need time to, you know, or? Bring it on, baby. All right. Chevy or Ford? Don't Ford. say it. Okay. I thought for sure you were going to go, what is it now, Stellanus? Stellanus? I don't know what it is anymore. Yeah. Ever since my dad left, it's oh, so you, okay. five times. That's the crazy thing. So my last brother retired from GM. Yeah. It ended a 122-year streak of Krupp men working for GM. And I was looking at my next car, and I have to buy a Chevy, right? And my one brother who's always been military, he's like, well, just get what you want. I don't know what to do with that kind of freedom. <laughs> yeah. But so, so, so here's how I feel about that. Yeah. Where I, what I grew up from yeah. didn't even get mentioned as an option. Right. Right. Chevy, Ford. Like, there's a third. Well, it was a third option. Like. We're right. not even, thanks for reinforcing my inferiority complex. Chrysler Plymouth Dodge, I remember. Mm-hmm. Now it's Stellantis. Have you looked up what Stellantis owns? Like, everything. Like, Fiat, uh, yeah. uh, Peugeot, Peugeot um, what's that? Just everything. Mm. It's crazy. Not me. No. They don't me own me. No. Uh, okay, so because you were messing around, I lost my spot. Sorry. I don't know if you want to beg you off the forgiveness. Game. Yeah. Text or phone call? Text. Movie or book? Book. iPhone or Android? Yeah, iPhone. I just switched to an Android. Did you? This is my first Android. Wow. Yeah. Alaska or Florida? Florida. Florida or Texas? Florida. Loser. <coughs> what? what? I need an ocean. Did the Lord speak? Uh, te- uh <laughs> the golf doesn't count. <laughs> it really, I, okay, here's why I prefer Texas. Uh, I think. I even live there. I've been there for a million bowl games, right? But there's a lot of barbecue. This is true. That's my reasoning. There you go. All okay. Right. I got family there. That's why I picked Florida. See, that's why I'd pick Texas. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I have I have a niece who works at NASA and a nephew who works uh, for an energy company, and they're in Houston. Okay. And I got my godmother, who's 3,000 years old, is in Brownsville. <laughs> Ooh, on yeah. the border? Yeah. Wow, with Flores. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Tough girl. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh, Coke or Pepsi? Neither. Really? Uh, don't drink Bob. What do you drink? Bourbon. Coffee. You drink coffee. Coffee, water, You're wine, scotch, bourbon. Yeah. Water, wine, scotch, bourbon. Got it. Uh, well, poop. Okay, hold on. We usually have this little iPad in front of me, but Carrie's drunk. Uh, Facebook or Twitter? Neither. Cat or dog? Ooh. I don't know what you're going to pick. Ooh, wow. You know what? Now, cat. I'm grew there. Up, grew up with dogs. Yep. I've fallen in love with cats. I'm super duper allergic to cats. Hmm. But every priest I know is like, you can't, priests can't have dogs anymore. It's going to die. Yeah. You're just always gone. Exactly. It's going to die. Yeah. And I take cat my doesn't dog need everywhere. You. I do. I take my dog everywhere. A cat, if you leave for a month and get back, he smoked all your cigarettes and he's <laughs> emptied the fridge and he's like, so what are we, what are we doing today? <laughs> you know, they don't care. Uh, and I found out there's a cat I'm not allergic to. And I'm thinking, I mean, my dog gonna is get old. It. He is. I mean, he's like, how are you doing? And, uh, yeah, okay. MSU or some lesser school? The lesser school. Okay. <laughs> Any school. <laughs> Was that clear enough? No, Carrie, the sound's out. The sound's out. 
You know, one of the, okay, stop. Uh, cake or pie? Mm, pie. Okay. And is cheesecake a pie? This has been an argument. That's this that's, is uh, yeah, I know, bro. I think it's like uh, it's the George Carlin skit. It's like meat cake, right? That's something yeah. that's been in the fridge for so long. You're not sure, like, is that meat? Is that cake? I don't know. Right. What is this? You eat it anyway. I don't know. I know we have had, haven't we? Numerous discussions. I think I've landed on it being pie. pie. Yeah, I think it's pie. Because it's shaped like a pie. Yeah, it's got to be pie. If you give me a round cake, it's a pie. That's all it is. It's all about geometry. Thank you. Yep, I agree. Pi r square. Uh, do you call it a lollipop or a sucker? Uh, we talking about the uh, thing you the, eat or a person? Yeah, the <laughs> the uh, fryer is sucker in Hebrew. Uh, <laughs> did you know that? No. Oh, it's hilarious. I gotta tell you a story after this. Uh, do you call it like a tootsie roll or tootsie pop? pop. Do you call that a lollipop or a sucker? Sucker. Yes. Okay. Because you're from grr, evil thing. All right. <laughs> I got to use I got to use me thumbprint. <laughs> See, Richard, that's what a real English accent sounds like. And that's the what makes a human person unique, right? right. Oh, you know I had to. Dogs write that can't paper, use it that, right? And I wrote this whole thing, and of course I just came from U of M School of Philosophy about how you know there's the spirit and the body and they're at war, and then sister died. <laughs> <laughs> she just did. I think she was like, you should not only not get ordained, you probably shouldn't procreate. You know, um, Like, my whole paper was all red. You couldn't see my words. And it, it's just as nice the, as she could. Yeah, she was like, you're stupid and I hate you. Yeah. Have you ever read the catechism? And I'm like, I don't have any cats. <laughs> Euchre or Pinochle? Pinochle. Yes! Oh, Thank pe- you. Love Pinochle. Oh, but I changed uh, the rules. Do you? Yeah. Talk to me, Goose. Uh, was, you can't. At a certain point, you can't keep uh, bluffing. So we're gonna we're gonna bring you back to. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking spades. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no. Pe- oh, pinochle. spades is alright. Pinochle, I can. No, I, I, pinochle just the way it was normally yeah. played. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I get, I know where you're going on the other one. Yeah. Well, can't sandbag. Uh, hot dog or burger? Burger. I have no idea what's in a hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. Or burger? A uh, hot dog, for sure. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> what, was I shouldn't think- even- what was I thinking? Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. What a dumb question. Uh, highways or back roads? Back roads. Now, this one's tough. Are you okay? Bacon or brisket? Oh, bacon. Okay. Okay. Now, that was boom. Yeah. That's my bro. Augusta- and I just had candied bacon, which oh. I think put me into third heaven. Talk to me. We just had lunch at a brunch at a little place down the street, and they had candied bacon. Wait, so brown, I had brown chocolate sugar. covered bacon. No, this was brown sugar, and it was baked, and oh, it was. We're doing it this was, when we get home. It was beautiful. It was yeah. close to the beatific vision. You know, have you ever like you? You know, Maybe we, when we do vision. evangelization, right? I, I, I just talked about this last week. If you ever have someone who's like, you know, I read my first Dawkins book, you know, and um, and I'm really smart now. Uh, I, I always, you just got to point to the pig because I grew up on a farm. There you go. And here's what I know. You can give them coffee grounds, rotted apple cores, and tennis shoes, and they'll eat it, and it becomes bacon. <laughs> and if you know that and don't believe in God, Something's wrong. you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, I don't believe in God. Have you seen a pig? Have you seen a pig? It's like And what it can produce. Yeah. Romans like would execute really awful people by feeding them to pigs. Yeah. And then of course they're not gonna turn down the bacon. That's right. And they're gonna know and they didn't ca- it's bacon. <laughs> it was this roly poly pink thing that likes to roll in mud and will eat anything and, and when it, it dies, bacon. it gives unto itself bacon. <laughs> there is a God. And his name is Jason. <laughs> okay, Augustine or Aquinas? Augustine. Yes. Do you know there are people who are wrong? Oh, totally. <laughs> Wine or cocktail? Ooh, inc- uh, it's tough wrong. choice. Tough, yeah. Tough. But you have to pick uh, or Jesus cocktail. will not love you anymore. Cocktail. Okay. Cocktail or beer? Cocktail. Cocktail or bourbon? Bourbon. Okay. Look at this. Okay. Uh, hiking or biking? Hiking. Okay. Uh, beach or mountains? Ooh, beach. Okay, now we have to go to you for this one. You, are you ready? 
Because if I ask you this, you're going to punch me in the chest, and I would be uncomfortable. <laughs> I'll hit you in the back. Girls' night out or spa day? Spa day. Okay. New car or classic car? New car. I grew no up kidding. A, yeah, I grew up in a car company. I got a new car every oh, eight months. I guess I'm thinking of like, you were an 80s kid, right? 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. Charger. Not a great time. Well, but see, my nobody. older sisters all had like Charger 446 packs, oh, the old Barracudas, oh, oh my the old the original yeah. Challengers. That's what I grew up with. Oh, and then I got uh, I got a driver's license, and we had the uh, the Omni and Horizon. Shut up! Oh, bro, no wonder you bought a Ford. Yeah, yeah I <laughs> but it was a 2.0. <laughs> Zero to sixty. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the Lord is good. Wow. Uh, yeah. I my first car was a nineteen seventy eight Pontiac T one thousand, which was their oh, Chevette. Yeah. yeah. Zero to sixty in thirty eight minutes. Yeah. Right. And Downhill. Uh, yeah. And I had the Sparkomatic radio oh, yeah. with you know single speaker in the mm -hmm. middle. And the cruise control was at sixty. <laughs> it did this. <laughs> you know, and you're like, that's sixty. I can't go faster. <laughs> Screaming highway to the danger zone. <laughs> All right. Well, my ear itches. Uh, that's our speed round. There we go. Are you okay? I'm. I might need CPR, but yep, uh, it happens. Or a bourbon. Yeah. Let's go with bourbon. Let's go with bourbon. Yeah. The CPR is a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. I've got to touch people. And you know uh, what? Or tooth again. <laughs> you have to come on the boat. You guys need to come. Up. We can smuggle you on. Uh, we'll wave. Yeah. Bye. And we'll be on a wave. <laughs> that's right. You Bye. Are. And it looks like it's gonna be really warm. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, I'm fat, right? You're so my definition of warm is anything above 48. Oh, there you go. You know, like uh, yesterday. You're going to love it. Who was it saw me and they were like, Father, you're not wearing. I was wearing a T-shirt and shorts and walking the dog. They're like, Father, it's 42. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know their point. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Jackie Robinson. <laughs> you know, I didn't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> this okay like i assume when i die they're gonna get bacon out of me <laughs> <laughs> you're not eating tennis balls are you right right oh yeah i'll eat tennis balls you dip them in chocolate or bacon grease there you go all right or bacon grease then chocolate there you go absorbs it the bacon grease proceeds from the chocolate oh don't do this all right so uh usually we do a closing prayer to jason um <laughs> Or Jesus, if you wish. Uh, but would you like to do the closing prayer? <laughs> I'll give you <laughs> ten bucks. <laughs> oh, holy! Cr no, I will not. <laughs> I have fifty bucks. What? Who did? Oh, collection. <laughs> There's somebody ah, else's chance. No, you would never. You know, no one would ever steal a accuse a priest of stealing fifty bucks from the collection because no one's putting fifty bucks. That's right. <laughs> it's like if you catch a priest with a buck in his pocket. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he probably took that probably one. Probably lifted yeah. that. Yeah, and it's been to eighty-three Catholic churches in his lifetime. <laughs> um, but no, I could do it. Or if you, are you, would you like to launch this? Missile? I'd love to. All right. Yeah. Um, well, brother, you know I love you and I look up to you, and I thank Jesus for you. And for your beautiful family here. Um, and uh, if ever any other voice, just remember this one saying, I'm a better priest because I know you guys. I'm, I'm a happier priest and I'm finding my way slowly but surely because of what you guys are doing in Acts 29. 29, yeah. And, um, and I'm so grateful to Jesus for you. Uh, with all of my heart. I Likewise. wish you wouldn't screw around so much. Very childish. Uh, but, yeah, and that whole Jason thing is a little too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, can you? And it was Friday the 13th. Maybe that's like how the devil sees Jesus. All right, I'm going to stop. <laughs> As Jason? Yeah, you know, because it's like, well, I can't kill him. And he keeps killing me, knocking me out, and you know, okay, I. This is why I'm never going to be a theologian. No. But okay, Can't whenever pray. you're ready. All right, launch pray. that missile. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Father, for the great gift of laughter and joy, and uh, the capacity to look at all of life uh, through the lens of faith, <sighs> we thank you. Thanks for the great gift of fellowship, friendship, brotherhood, for. 
time we have to be together right now. We just pray for those who are watching or listening, especially who are troubled yeah. and uh, finding life burdensome or challenging, that you would bring them relief and comfort, that your son, who is the divine physician, would reach into their hearts and their minds and fill them with hope, encouragement, remind them again and again that you're our father, that you're good, that you hold our lives in your hands. Thanks for everything we have, for it's all gift. Help us to use it well for the glory and the honor of your name and the good of our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, don't forget, uh, oh, your podcast. Uh, you were born for this. You were born for this is the name of the podcast. Check it out. And then check out so, Rescue Project. So rescueproject.us. Oh, so Rescue oh, Project the is the video series. That's right. Yeah. So it's now available in Spanish too. See. Si. So. Uh, That's Spanish. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear it in Irish. Irish accent. Si. Oh, it is lovely. Muy <laughs> amable. Yeah, so rescueproject.us is the website of this initiative that we created, uh, which is our way of telling the story. Okay. So everything's free. It's all out there. It's all on video. There's everything that anybody needs to do it. It's intended to be done in small groups, whatever. Okay. Um, so you can access not only the videos, but the participant guides and whatever. It's all there. Available. And do you guys need donors? Like, is there some information you want to give for our folks in case they feel called to donate to the... Um, 501c3? We're always looking for partners. First okay. prayer partners. Okay. Most especially because... Oh, nice. You'll uh, get that. These go, cats pray. We go hard after the enemy, so the enemy goes hard after us. So uh, pray for protection. And then if you want to, if you, you know, pray, the Lord leads you to be generous with us, we'd love it. Um, even if it's five bucks a month, something. Uh, but our... So we have two websites. The Rescue Project website is rescueproject.us. And our website is acts29.org, so A-C-T-S-X-X-I-X.org. -X okay. And we just launched a streaming channel. Shut so up. We have an, now you got an Android phone. We, so you can do it on an Android. You have to go to, like, watch.acts29.org. Okay. But if you have an Apple device, you can go to the, the App Store, and there's an Acts 29 app. Shut up. Yeah, so. That is so Well, I do have an iPad, so, there you go. I'll, so yep, download I'll do the it app. that way. Yep. And that's what I use for my prayer book. Like, okay. it says yeah. exclusively my bravery, my Bible. Yeah. Um, yeah, so groovy. Okay. Yeah. And then forgive me one more time the name of the app. Acts29.org. Oh, Acts29. yep. And when he says 29, folks, that's XXIX. Right. Okay. Uh, do you know the one about the Roman soldier who walked in the bar and said, I'll have five beers? Sorry. Uh, but please check out rescueproject.us and uh, check out the, the Acts 29. Uh, now, there is a – what's that guy? He was not a good dude. Uh, he Reparative. was running a church out of Seattle. Um, come Holy Spirit. I shouldn't say he's not a good dude. Uh, but he has a website called Acts 29. Yeah, it's actually a, a common evangelical terminology. Yeah. That's why we use the Roman numerals. Okay, groovy. Yeah. If so you go to Arabic numbers, that, you aren't going to get to us. It was so crazy, bro. I I typed in Acts 29, and I get there, and at first, I'm like, oh, praise the Lord. John's got a heck of a graphics team. And then I'm like, oh, John. What happened you to know, John? Yeah, and it really. And oh, I'm like, John. oh, no. And, uh, and then I get down, and I see that one preacher, and I'm like, I'm a moron. Uh, and then I found y'all. Yeah. But okay. So folks, the podcast is um You were born for me. this. You were born for this. And that's also available on any podcast channel that you use. Okay. And I've listened to a few of them. And that's you and Mary, right? Is it is yeah, there other Mary, me. and then uh, Rick and Nick on our team, they do another podcast which is for leaders. So okay. it, not just, you know, pastors or people in the church, but for Businessmen and women for families, really? and that's in, that's called uh, the Mission Guys. The also, Mission Guys. Yeah. Okay, G U I S. Yep. Okay. Also available on any podcast channel you use. Okay. So lots of great resources. Carrie typed them just so you know, great. so they'll see them on the screen. Awesome. Um, but again, thank you, brother, and thank, thank you, guys. Great you know, being I with love you, yous, and I'm so grateful to Jesus for you. Love you too, man. Thanks. All right, fight the power. Unless it's me. Is it over? No, it's never over.